Hi, this is Pastor Jimmy from uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina this time. God bless you and keep you uh, always. That's what we want, isn't it? Uh, let me share this very uh, interesting thought. Uh, you know, we know there are many Christians out there, or many so-called believers, right? But we also have watched and observed that even though there are many Christians or believers, they say they are, but the promise of God is not really eminent in their own life. I mean, it's not, you don't see like, okay, so what's the difference between uh, uh, you who call believers and who are not? Uh, there, are f there are few who, who live the life that, and, and in their own lives, actually fruits of God's promises is actually uh, evident. I mean, it, it is real. So you could, you could tell like, wow, if I believe like, like they believe, would my life change like that? May, may I have that blessing that, that I see in their life? Yes, it is true. But we also see the many say they believe, but they do not have that fruit that God has promised. Why and why not? Well, let me uh, share a few verses so we may can think correctly within intention of God. Amen. Uh, I'm going to share uh, Isaiah chapter uh, uh, 8, a couple of verses in 8, and a couple of verses in 9, and some uh, verses in Jeremiah. Okay? I'm going to share uh, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20 to 22 first. Okay, here we go. Uh, from 20, where is that? Oh, my eyes. All right. To the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. Distressed and hungry, they will roam through the land. When they are famished, they will become enraged and looking upward will curse their king and their God. Wow. Then they will look toward the earth and see only distress and darkness and fearful gloom. And they will be thrust into utter darkness. Wow. Why? And he says, because they do not follow the law of God. And what is the law? What is the law? Well, law is like this. When Jesus comes, He set us free from the law of the sinful nature. What is the sinful nature? Well, sinful nature is nature that you only think about yourself. Your own happiness, your own goodness, your own whatever. Your own Babel Tower. However you beautifully put it, your successful life story, whatever it is, it's a selfishness. The truth is this. When God created us, He created us as image of God, which means it's a selfless. <laughs> selfless. It's not selfishness. Okay? But when sin comes in to the mankind, which is tempted by the evil, what happened? The evil tried to change your intention to self-focused. So more you become selfish, more you destroy your life. No matter how much you have it, or, or you will have it, don't matter. As long as you are selfish individual, you are doomed. To darkness, yes. You are doomed for eternal perish. Yes, according to the words of God. So, that's why God sent His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you and I on the cross. Not because of His uh, sin. <laughs> Not because of His weaknesses. No, no, no. But because of your sin and my sin. Because of your weaknesses and my weaknesses. 
God didn't want to abandon us. But he says, hey guys, okay, so you have to change your life. And this is the way. And he has shown that cross. And try to teach us, yes, and God is trying. I mean, you are, you are not a robot. I am not a robot. We are not programmed. See, we have a free will, which is also a gift from God. And why He, why God, our Father, mighty Creator, has given us that free will? Because a free will is the only thing that we can really worship. Okay, we can choose with our free will who to bow down, <laughs> who to worship, who will be glorified. A beautiful thing is our Father God, He just doesn't want us to bow down just to get what we want. You know, that's, that's not what God wants. He wants us to love and respect because it is the right thing. Righteousness. Holiness. See? But it is not the tool to get something for yourself or myself. It's not. But it is way of life. Because it is the right thing to do. But as we read in Isaiah chapter 8, you know, a couple of verses, that many will be doomed for eternal perish, perishment, eternal destruction. Why? Because they do not follow the law. They do not follow, they do not follow the intention of God. They just want to be blessed. So there are many Christians who just want to be blessed, but they don't want to change their lives. They are still self-focused. They are still selfish. If they are, if you are, if I am, then the promise of God also goes for everybody that we are doomed for eternal perishment, destruction. So God says, hey, hey. So stop being selfish, okay? Forget you. God loves you. More than you love yourself. So, stop being selfish. Come on. You are more than that. You are bigger than that. God's intention for you is glorious. You are not just a, a particle of dust. You're not. Yes, God created you with image of God. And He wants to bless you. And He wants to show you and confirm with God in you so you may experience God's glorious promises. Wow, it's not amazing. Let me continue to read Isaiah chapter 9, verse uh, 6 to 7. This is about the promise of God. Prophesy about Jesus Christ through prophet Isaiah. Let me read it to you. But this is a continuancy from the promises that we have read in Chapter 8 as well. Let me read it to you. For to us a child is born, who is Jesus Christ. To us a son is given, who is Jesus Christ. And the government will be on his shoulders, which means everything will be according to. Everything will be governed by God within the intention through his son, Jesus Christ. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. Amen. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this like zeal of God, like zeal of Almighty God. Like God says, you know what? I will do my best. All my strength, all my concern will be focused on this. That if you follow my son in the form of righteousness. Yes. Righteousness. Yes. Justice. Yes. What is justice and righteousness? It has to start from selfless. 
If you only think about yourself, what is justice? I mean, yes, someone can get hurt and says, Oh, I want revenge. Vengeful heart. Oh, I want revenge. And they may call it justice, justice, strife <laughs> for individual. But that's not the justice we're talking about. We are talking about justice of God, justice of Jesus Christ, righteousness of Jesus Christ. How? Through the cross. What righteousness have you discovered through the cross? Is it self-righteousness? Is it self-justice? No. It's a selfless. It's for the others. It's for the glory of God. Start to be responsible for the others. Start to concern about others. Love others. You are stronger than you think you are. Yes. Because we are created with the image of God. I know. Often it may seem not. It may not seem that way. Like, oh, I'm nothing. Yes. But when God becomes your everything, even though you are nothing, you have to remember that God died for you, which is die for nothing. Why? So that way you can be part of God. You can be a body of Christ. You can be child of God. So he says, hey, hey, never mind you. Think about me. I have a great plan for you. Yes, I will establish my kingdom in you. To be glorified with God. But first, you think of God. First, you seek His kingdom, His will, and you will reign with God forevermore in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me show you a few verses in the book of Jeremiah as well. Jeremiah chapter 4, from verse 1. To two. If you will return, O Israel, return to me, declares the Lord. If you put your detestable idols out of my sight and no longer go astray, and if in a truthful, just, and righteous way you swear, as surely as the Lord lives, then the nation will be blessed by him, and in him there will glory. Hallelujah. Okay. Yes, God loves you and I unconditionally, but in his unconditional love, there's a law. There's a law of love, and that law is the cross. Of Jesus Christ has to be risen in your heart and in my heart yes and when that cross is risen and when we deny ourselves and be crucified on that cross within your heart and within my heart you know what that means it means I am no more selfish I decide not to be selfish I decide not to be evil not to be part of the destruction but I decide to glorify God take responsible take my own cross which means take a responsible yes responsibility of justice righteousness for all mankind to glorify God the believing God is the law. The law is like lo loving God with all your heart and mind and soul, with all your characteristics and strength. But second is like this. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Yes. That's a basic. And once we do that, once we lift that cross, lift that tree in our heart, then here we go. Here we are to start to live the life of God's promises. Then you and I, we will see glory of God in our daily lives. 
and we will bear much fruit, all the fruit that God has promised. And paradise of God is here on now, forever, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you and keep you. So you may live the life to raise that cross, lift that cross in your heart. Shalom.